Z. Z. Y. Y. W. W. O. O. M. M. B. B. Podcast. Podcast. I'm Shan. I'm Anya. Say Ari. Ari. <laughs> Welcome to Cozy Womb Podcast. Let's go. Hey, this is Shan, Mom of the Girls. Thank you for checking in. If this is your first time at Cozy Womb Podcast, welcome. It's a very random but frequently posted show. Enjoy what you can when you can. It's for new parents. Y'all are very welcome. It's for a second, third, or more time around parents too. And I did not forget those of you who aren't quite there yet, haven't had your first kid, but you're thinking about it and you're just curious on what it takes to go ahead and survive the kids that you may make. Cool. Since we're all here, let's get into today's episode. So how are you raising your children? Are you raising your children to think that girls can only do this, boys can only do this, or are you raising them as if all genders are equal? Like women matter equally just as men matter equally. I think society pressures parents to put pressure on their kids in terms of power, in terms of um, building a boy into a man, building a, a girl into a woman so she can take care of a home. And I think that warps, you know, how children grow to respect adults, how they grow to respect each other. And I think the way that we stop the double standards in adult life is we stop the double standards in how we raise children. Adulting double standards trickle down into their own kids. And if we raise our kids with double standards, then they're going to grow up thinking a man is more important than a woman and a woman should be limited to these things. And I don't want to raise my children to think that they can only be limited to some things and a man has to do X, Y, and Z or he's not considered a a man. For instance, right now, um, I got into a discussion with a friend of mine and I asked them, I said, so at, at what age are you going to talk to your son about sex? And he was like, when well, he's like um, 15 in high school. His son is 11 now. But his son is 11 in 2019. And the odds are his friends are already talking about moving parts. His friends are already talking about um, sexual encounters. You don't know what's going on in the next child's household and what they're exposed to and they all have cell phones and the internet is so easy and free you know wi-fi is everywhere that i would never limit my child to the exposure of me having that discussion with my son at 15 in college i mean in high school because he's he already had his own ideas of it without my input And so he's um, possibly expecting a daughter. And I'm just like, okay, so with your daughter, when are you having that sex talk? And he was like, "Mm, later, very later, not when I have it with my son. And I I I think that's unbalanced. I think that's not uh, practical. I think today in 2019, the best time to talk to your daughter about sex and your son about sex is when their bodies are changing. And right now, because of the foods and the chemicals in the foods, our young kids, their bodies are changing a lot earlier than expected. They're getting hair on their face a lot earlier than expected. They're getting boobs faster. They're um, gaining weight in uh, places that you wouldn't think they would be gaining weight. Uh, and their bodies are changing a bit faster. That means we're going to have to attack certain discussions a bit faster than normal. So me personally, I will have that discussion about what sex is, what to look out for, what situations that you should not put yourself in the middle of to avoid X, Y, and Z things with my children at eight, nine. 
And yes, that does come with maturity. That does come with, you know, what your child may be exposed to, how hands-on you are with your child, who's around your child to have these discussions. I'm not telling everybody that this is the age you have to. But for me, because I know how eager my five-year-old is to have a phone she does not have a cell phone but I know how eager she is to have a phone or to be on other people's phones that what she may see that I'm not particularly showing her may come to her a lot quicker if I wait and I hold off on being around quote-unquote age 15 16 17 so I'm just going to talk a bit about some double standards and for women a double standard may come to them as Um, Women are supposed to raise kids, all right? What happened to a man and a woman raising kids? Women have biological clocks that are ticking, so they have to hurry up and have kids. Uh, Women should be the primary caregiver and not a worker, quote-unquote, and not able to do both, or she's looked down upon for trying to work or have a career for herself and be a mother. It's kind of like women have this mysterious cloud over their head like oh everybody's watching you be a bad mother because you're here working overtime where's your child at why aren't you home with your child but as a man a man is raised not to make any babies unless he's sure he wants babies which I think is very unfair a man should want babies and want to take care of his child just as much as a woman should I don't think it should be anything where a man and a woman has to choose how they want to take care of their kid, when they want to take care of their kid. I think it should be more balanced and we have to stop allowing society to dictate how we teach our girls and our women how to do that and how we teach our men and our boys how to do that. Another double standard that I hate is that... um, Unless a man can financially take care of a family, he should not want to have kids. Or if he's not married, he should not want to have kids. Or he shouldn't be thinking about having kids. He has no biological clock, so he can do it whenever he wants. But there's a lot more pressure put on a woman to do it. Or when, you know, girls grow up, It's okay for them to cry. It's okay for them to be sad. It's okay for them to complain a little bit. But a boy is not supposed to do it. A boy is not supposed to have a problem. A boy is supposed to suck it up. A boy is not supposed to be able to vent. Both girl and a boy can vent. Both girls and a boy can, you know, have some issues and want to talk about it and complain a little bit. Yes, we do want to look for solutions, but we can't just say that a boy cannot complain. A boy cannot have an issue with anything. We can't do that. That's not fair. When it comes to uh, caring, it's more so put on, oh, that's a woman's thing. A woman is supposed to care about feelings. It's a woman's job to care. So when you get a woman that's not really very emotional, she's looked at like, ooh, why are you acting like a man? There is no man and woman when it comes to emotion. Emotion is emotion. Emotion is genderless. Like, there's no man and woman when it comes to emotion. Stop putting that more so on a woman than on a man. Like, it's a man's obligation to take care of it. Take care of what? A man is not allowed to have feelings. A man is not allowed to talk about his feelings. A man is not allowed to share what... He's not understanding what problem may come up or if he needs help with something. There's no balance in that. Or a man is not supposed to cry. A man is not supposed to get tired. A man is not supposed to be exhausted. A man is supposed to hurry up and move on. Get something new. Go do something and take your mind off of it. Just because you do something new doesn't mean your mind is not going to go back on that thing that you're not dealing with. And a lot of the things that men aren't dealing with come up later on because they're not dealing with them. Women have a lot more room to deal with their issues because somebody's willing to sit there and talk to them about it. Girls have a lot more room to deal with a lot of issues because they're 
friends who are girls and their aunts and their moms and their sisters are there to let them talk about it. You know, oh, you having a bad day as a boy? Oh, let's go shoot some hoops. Oh, let's go go here. Or let's go to this pool party. Let's go drink. Let's go play cards. But there's no room for a discussion, a place to talk about it. There has to be a place to talk about it. Or it's going to come up later. Like, I, I'm, I'm not understanding. And then it kind of pushes a boy into manhood where he's looking at the fact that his wife or his child's mother wants him to watch his kids as him babysitting because that's a woman's job. That's not something a man should be doing. A man should not be watching kids. That's incorrect. When you have kids, man or woman, you're just spending time with your kids. You're having quality time with your kids. Women take control of what your baby looks like, smells like, how your baby learns. Oh, it's school time, go get your baby registered. It's not more so put on a man. You know, are you going to go get the school supplies for your for your daughter or your son? It's more so looked at as a woman's job to do that. That's a man and a woman's job. You know? And when your child is not acting correct in school or your child is misbehaving, oh, I'm going to call your mom. Or I need to talk to your mom. Or the teacher called, you need to go up to the school. It's more so looked at as a woman needs to do that. Why can't the man or the woman do that? Why can't the mom or the dad do that? Even when it comes down to being married, the abbreviation at the beginning of your name for a woman goes from Miss, uh, MS, to MRS, which is pronounced Mrs., okay? You are considered to be someone's Mrs., and that someone's Mrs. that you are would be your husband but your husband as a man he remains mister whether he's single or he's married that's already a separation right there why do i have to be labeled someone has me i'm taken by someone but this man here has no label saying i'm taken by someone other than if he chooses to wear his ring today or not I just feel like it's a bit backwards. It's very unfair. And there shouldn't be no extra label put on anyone's name because, quote unquote, a woman is married, but a man can be kind of like a free agent out in the world and nobody really knows unless they see a, a ring on his finger. And then we have this whole thing about, you know, it's a choice if you want to wear your wedding ring or not. So everybody has their mixed ideas about what a man should do and what a woman should do. I just think we have to let go of it when it comes to kids, when it comes to girls, when it comes to boys as they grow up, so they can see that it should be fair on both sides, that it should be room for both people to share their thoughts and their feelings and their emotions and to have their own space, that it's a healthy space. You know, in fashion, when it comes to boys and girls right now, there's no way I can go into a store right now, realistically, and get a pair of jeans for my two-year-old without it being skinny or really clingy and tight. Why does a two-year-old's pants need to be clingy and tight? I have to go a whole size or two sizes up for her to have some loose pants to be in. Sometimes I even choose to buy the boys pants because it's a bit loose but then now when you see the teenagers pants boys or girls they're just saying like tightness they're very slim cut and tight and skinny and nothing has to be that tight on a child you don't need to be seeing my child's chest you don't need to be seeing my child's butt really tight my child's back in the shirt or the dress doesn't have to be out. It's a lot of unnecessary um, cuts in children's clothing right now that I'm not understanding why. Like, it's okay to have the same outfit as mom when it's appropriate. We could wear the same dress. 
we can have on the same color. We can wear the same shoes. But when it comes to low cut things and backs being out and midriff showing, I don't necessarily think that needs to be in kids' clothes. And then you grow up and all of a sudden, when you were a girl and you were a teenager, everybody's telling you to cover that up, cover that up. Now that you're 18, all the clothing is switching to show it off, show it off. But why though? But the whole time for a boy, it's wear what you want, wear a t-shirt, wear jeans, wear sneakers, wear dress shoes if you want to. But then for girls, it changes really fast. Like we have to get into just wearing a shirt, wearing a pants, wearing a skirt, wearing the overalls, wearing jeans, wearing uh, dressy shoes, wearing stockings. Then it goes from that to wearing certain types of panties, wearing a bra, wearing a sports bra, knowing how to use um, a pad or a tampon, um, not showing your uh, cleavage, not showing your midriff, certain panties you wear with certain things. These are these different type of panties. You know what I'm saying? It gets really, you know, fuzzy on why things are how they are. And what you teach a girl, you should be teaching a boy also. You know? Because there's a lot of, uh, you know, brothers raising sisters today. There's a lot of sisters rearing, raising brothers today and I feel like you're going to do them a disservice if you don't teach them about what the other uh, sex needs are at certain ages you can't hide that from them when I was in uh, elementary school in sixth grade that's when we were taking sex ed and sex ed was taught in Maryland with boys and girls in the same room like it wasn't separated And now I don't hear anybody talking about uh, kids learning about sexual education. And I think that should be an ongoing thing because everything is so, you know, touch of a hand, touch of a click of a button right now. Everything should be updated, especially parties that they go to. Like everything's too accessible for you to not talk about it. Um, When it comes to women uh, being told when they can breastfeed, but all of their clothing being shown that they can uh, show off their boobs or if they can go on the beach, they can show off all their boobs except for a nipple. And that's okay. But when they're breastfeeding, everybody's shocked and appalled and has something to say. I don't think that's right. I don't think that's right. It it just, it doesn't make any sense to me. And when, you know, you're raising your son, are you teaching your son manners? And at, at what stages are you teaching them manners? Are you teaching them to hold the door open for women or the elderly? Are you teaching them to pull out a lady's chair when they're out on a date or they're out for lunch? Are you teaching them to let a woman order first? Are you teaching them to... Uh, you know, walk on a certain side of the street when they're walking with a woman or not? When are you teaching them that? Why are you teaching them that? You know, we should be teaching our daughters, the the younger, the better, I think, you know, not to sit in a man's lap, you know, not to sit a certain way with skirts. If a man touches them in the wrong area without asking let them know what that is that that's not right that that's a form of harassment what is harassment if a woman does it a lot of people will be like oh that's nothing oh you're making a big deal but it should be the same thing if a man touches a woman or a little girl in the in a a private area that's harassment if a woman touches a man in a private area it's something to be praised upon that's wrong that's a double standard She just, quote unquote, knows what she wants. No, she's inappropriate. My child is a boy. She's a woman. She knows better. You know, this whole stigma of, you know, 
oh, at this age, kids should be able to pick their gender. A kid doesn't know anything about gender until they're taught about gender. A kid doesn't know anything about sexual cravings until they're taught what sexual cravings are. If there's a woman in a park, right? And it's a park full of kids and she doesn't have any kids, it's looked at as being okay. But if it's a man in the park and he doesn't have any kids, it's looked at as him being a creep. That's a double standard. You don't know why that woman is at the park, just like you don't know why that man is at the park. Um, what's a double standard? In the news, uh, I think it was last week, a man was followed, a black man was followed at a gas station. He had two um, young white kids with him, and this lady followed him, asked to see the girl, um, asked what he was doing with those kids, and the man was babysitting. He's been babysitting um, these two kids for years now. Um, he has a, uh, I think he had like a uh, after school child program or something, and he was just watching the kids. And she called the police because she wasn't sure what the deal was with them. And I think at a certain point, if the kids are not acting as if they're in harm's way, you see the kids and they're okay. He's not dragging them anywhere. He's not avoiding the public. And the police officer questioned him, and the kids were upset because they weren't sure what they should say. They didn't want to get him in trouble. Uh, They didn't want him to get locked up. That's a lot of trauma for somebody's assumption of this black man should not be with these two white kids. Whereas I feel like if those two kids were with me as a woman at a gas station, nobody's going to turn around and call the police on me. There's a double standard in society that men are allowed to do something and women are not allowed and vice versa. And I feel like that's stopping us from being um, open-minded, that's stopping us from being better people when we conform to this type of thinking. Men need to ask women out, not women asking men out. I think a man can ask a woman out, and I think a woman can ask a man out. I think a boy can like a girl, and a girl can like a boy, and she can say so. I don't feel like you need to wait until he comes to you because you're a girl. I feel like that's a double standard. The assumption that women are terrible drivers is a double standard. The assumption that a girl cannot throw a football because she's a girl is a double standard. The assumption that a boy cannot dance because he is a boy is a double standard. You don't want to make a boy feel disattached and unable to be expressive about his wants and his needs and his desires because society says, oh, you're not supposed to feel that. You're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to act upon X, Y, and Z. You don't want to because you're limiting what people could possibly want. You're limiting where people could possibly go. Stop the double standards, okay? Raise your sons how you want to raise your sons. Raise them to respect girls. Raise them to respect women. Raise them to expect women in authority. Raise them and understand where they're lacking and where they can be better. Raise your daughters to be better girls, more open, better women. Raise them to understand that a man can also take care of a child. A man can also be a stay-at-home dad and still be a man. A man should be respected just like they should be respected by that man. There is no woman is less than and there is no man is uh, better than or should be better than in X, Y, and Z because they're a man. I think that's bogus. I, I don't, I'm not raising my children like that. You know, if one of my kids, one of my daughters want to play football, she can play football. If one of them wants to play soccer, she can play soccer. If one of them wants to be a judge, she can be a judge. If she wants to be a chief 
whatever she can be whatever she wants to be i'm not telling her she can't do it because she's not born a boy i'm not doing that stop limiting your children based upon society's double standards stop saying oh my son could date whoever at whatever age they are no matter what but my daughter's not dating until she's married that's a double standard And the reality is your daughter is going to date when she wants to date. Have you prepared her for dating? Have you had those talks with her or are you dodging and hiding because you don't want to have those talks? You want to act like that's never going to happen. The reality is your daughter is going to date. The reality is your daughter is going to come across some scum and males. And she needs to know how to go about dealing with scum and males. She's going to come across a boy that grows into a man that's worth the time and day that she may want to give him. You have to teach her how to be the best girlfriend or the best fiance or the best wife. A man and a woman can do that. A mother and a father can do that. There are no double standards in raising these kids. Just be a great parent. Thank you for still listening. Got any advice or just want to ask anything? You can reach me on IG at Cozy Moon Mama or at whoisshan.com or you can email me at Cozy Moon Mama at gmail.com. Thanks. Bye. Bye.